19. Played for the pink into the right centre, I feel, but it's just missed just the line of the cue ball, so that's end of break, I feel. Useful start, though. One. Well, very coolly done. So, second bite at the cherry for Mohamed Ibrahim. We've seen a few upsets uh, today. We saw Stephen Holworth beat Ryan Day. We saw, of course, uh, Hayden Pinay play very well to beat Luca Brassell. Sean O'Sullivan came close to knocking out Mark Williams, although Williams did win that one. But obviously, this would trump everything <laughs> if Mohamed Ibrahim could win this one tonight. Just about on a red to the right Six. centre, but I don't think the angle is particularly good for him. The biggest challenge I think that faces players such as Mohamed Ibrahim, due to the tour, becoming accustomed to playing conditions, the speed of the cloth, but the first bad mistake from him. I don't think he's left O'Sullivan an easy red. Well, the greatest of all time still gets a bit of luck now and again. That was a big slice, let's be honest. Huge fluke, this. Yeah, absolutely massive, Dave. If Ronnie can pop this brown and get onto his next red, because look at the position of the reds now. Well, it's not Five. finished too good so we will see but maybe it's not too costly yeah easy. I mean O'Sullivan I'm sure would love to win the tournament get in the tour championship but I think also for him a month out from the crucible it's also about sort of finding out where his game is to do that he needs a few matches under his belt here this week <coughs> just saw him looking at Ibrahim there just working out okay what sort of player is he because you won't have seen him before never played each other well you rolled the dice but may be punished this time Every time you play somebody like a Ronnie O'Sullivan or a Judd Trump, there's enormous pressure on you. You know that every mistake is likely to be punished. One. It's always the case, though. Yeah, it's been a strange season in a way for O'Sullivan. He's won two big titles. The Hong Kong Masters was in front of a record 
live audience of nine and a half thousand and he won the champion of champions which is now established as a very prestigious event but they're not ranking Eight. events so his best performance in ranking events two quarter finals and in both he was whitewashed Ding Junhui six nil in the UK Championship Tianpeng Fei five nil in the Welsh Open so it's been quiet in terms of world ranking events he's still number one officially 30. but of course on the one year list he's down at 22nd that's why he's gonna have to win this event to get in the Tour Championship 14 wasn't in the Players' Championship recently in Wolverhampton. But you always feel with Ronnie O'Sullivan at any moment he could turn it on. And when does that, of course, then there's no one better. 22. Another one of Ronnie O'Sullivan's enormous virtues is, 20. for me, his ability to acclimatise to differing playing 30. conditions so quickly. This is what can happen. Mohamed Ibrahim Fortified. took that red onto left middle, didn't get it, left the chance, and really in the blink of an eye, the frame is disappearing from underneath him. 46. Still obviously requires this last red though. 52. If it misses the black. Oh, dreamy stuff. 52. What a beautiful positional shot that was. Just to perfection. Yeah, this has been uh, excellent stuff. Snook is required. Just checking the scores. Only one needed. A swift effort of 53. Oh, yes, 153. Means that Brian Snooker. So Sullivan's frame. Something else that Mohamed Ibrahim will soon realise that when you're playing snookers against the top players, they need to be good ones, and that's not the best. shot there though won't be attempting the green can stun the cue ball tight in behind the pink make sure that green is right down this top end of the table if it's gone wrong it may oh, just be a snooker but it's a fairly easy swerve It doesn't exactly help Ibrahim's cause, being snookered himself. And also Sullivan seems in quite a business-like mood. He's playing properly and you know got his sort of match head on here.
course in the recent Welsh Open Ronnie had all kinds of tip troubles with his cue ended up biting it off after he lost yeah I think it was the feral wasn't it that was the problem I think John Paris did uh, look at that and fix it for him because he did play again of course after that in Thailand Having to try and stay patient here because it's only one snooker, one successfully laid one that's required. His previous attempt at a snooker, Mohamed Ibrahim came on the pink towards the bulk cushion, that won't help him. But yes, just the one snooker required, so always an opportunity, always a chance, it could happen. Oh dear, well, that's oh, made the task a lot harder, clearly two now. Well, he did catch it, and uh, virtually got one back, I think, so that's an incredible result, really, to finish there. Just flicks it yeah. on the way back, yeah, the other yeah. side. Yeah, good job. He thinks it's a pop-up. He did hit the green, so it's all right. Oh, he definitely hit it, yeah. Quite a sneaker. This cue ball's running well. Oh, quite enough. I can't help but think that Ronnie uses these opportunities when frames are safe just try and play a varying style of shot just to assess the way the cloth is playing with different side spins and different paces just to benefit him in the future frames
problem Mohammed Ibrahim has got here is that O'Sullivan's playing properly. You know, he's not just sort of throwing his cue at them. He's been sensible. And uh, it's still two successful snookers that he needs. He hasn't got any yet. Thinly, but avoided the enough. Would be handy for Mohammed Ibrahim if that pink were just another couple of inches off that bolt cushion. I think it's just a little close to it to get in behind. To ends any doubt, what a lovely pot on the green. So Sullivan, he did the damage earlier on, of course, with that 53 break. Uh, it's made a lovely sound. As it went in. Seven. A month from now, we'll know whether he's still in the World Championship or not. He'll have played his first match on April the 15th. Twelve. The only player who knows now, as it stands, when he'll be playing at the Crucible. Will he be in the Tour Championship? We'll have to win this WST Classic to get in. He's won his first frame of the tournament. 18, Ronnie O'Sullivan frame. Mohamed Ibrahim had a few early chances, but when O'Sullivan got his, that 53 was the crucial break, and the battle for snookers ultimately came to nothing. O'Sullivan leads 1-0. There's a real battle going on on the table three. Jackson Page three, Anton Kazakov three. Page has come back from 3-1 down there. Kazakov in front in the decider. That would be a huge win for a Ukrainian player mean a lot I'm sure to his supporters but let's uh, look back at that uh, first frame now this was uh, a nice pot from Ibrahim early on just couldn't quite and it's difficult isn't it C coming in conditions not really used to them to control things so broke down this was a big fluke of course Yes, ultimately it didn't cost Mohamed Ibrahim too many points because one, he did pop the brown but didn't get on his next red. He's having a chat there with Jason Francis. Sat there behind watching. But this was a great green from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Frame was already won at that stage, of course, but it will still give Ronnie a lot of confidence in knocking a pot like that. I think it's just always good to see him in a tournament, isn't it? And as I say, it's a uh, chance for a tune-up. It's interesting, though, in terms of you look at this is a flat one to eight tournament so it's coming in in round one as frame. opposed to a more limited field or being seeded further in he hasn't won one of these events coming in in the last one to eight since the 2018 uk championship so he's won a lot of other tournaments including the world championship a couple of times and other big prestige events but these sort of uh, tournaments where this uh, the cast of thousands as it were at the venue he doesn't always fare well in so it'll be interesting to see his progress if he can win this match how he goes in the tournament because he's seeded number one it's a new event so he's at the top of the draw that was a little wild meanwhile yeah the winner plays david grace or ryan thomason and they are uh, up later on One. Well, these are the sorts of opportunities that all players relish at the beginning of a frame. Black is available clearly into the right corner. Just tried to hold for red there into the same pocket, but has overrun it. Still has a secondary Eight. alternative to the left centre, though. Nine. I 
think the red that's just below the pink at the top of that little group of six there may well pot into the right corner that will help Ronnie he's played for the red there that's just below the black 12. because if you can get that one out of the way it makes break building a lot easier 13 Yeah, we've seen Judd Trump's nine of the century tonight. 21. Of course, Ronnie O'Sullivan is just over four years ago. It was the anniversary actually last week of his thousandth at the Preston Guildhall. Last frame of the Players' Championship, typically showman-like way to end proceedings. 28. Winning frame, a thousandth century, and just great scenes, crowd all on their feet cheering. 29. Just brilliant. And I'm sure Trump and others will get to a thousand, but obviously O'Sullivan can say, I was there first. Control exhibited by Ronnie O'Sullivan playing that positional shot off the pink for the blue. There's just very little this man isn't able to achieve on a snooker table. control perfectly on the blue or the pink I wouldn't be surprised to see him try and cannon into the two reds together here just to split them apart as well no and the reason being he can play that next from the black 56. if he wishes because of the red near the left corner he's guaranteed 57. to be on it it's just uh, the speed of it isn't it the speed of thought execution the precision as well this frame looks over. 64. 65. Black is frame ball. 65. I guess I want to absolutely make sure because there was a long battle for snookers in the last frame, but could well be a century here. Well, he's just lost the cue ball a little. As I say, once this in, because otherwise you can guarantee Ibrahim will come back to the table. In it goes. 73. He's now, by the way, on 1,196 career century, so he's motored since that uh, memorable night four years ago. 79 80 87 Just five and a half minutes this frame so far and uh, it's been very ruthlessly killed off in style Ninety-five. Another one for the collection then. Another century from the queue of Romeo Sullivan. In the blink of an eye. One hand and three. One hand and four.
So 27 points left on. Highest break so far, 136. So he could just pip it by a point. I don't think 137 would last for the £5,000 prize, but even so, it's going to be the new front runner, Andrew Higginson, made a 136 on the opening day last night. 515. Five hundred and nineteen. Five hundred and twenty-four. Five hundred and thirty. Well, you always wonder how he's going to play, how he's going to feel. I think he's feeling good. I think he's playing great. This has been a wonderful total clearance from Ronnie O'Sullivan of one hundred and thirty-seven. The new Tormund high break to take control of this match. He leads Mohamed Ibrahim by two frames to nil. He's just going for a little bathroom break, as is Mohamed Ibrahim. Just uh, on the other scores, Hamid Mir is 2 0 up on Sam Craigie. Jackson Page has come back to beat Anton Kazakov. So 4 3, Jackson Page will play. His mentor, Mark Williams, in the next round. And 2-1 to Lucas Kleckers of Germany against Jimmy Robertson. But we saw there, Dominic, what can happen. Ronnie O'Sullivan just finding inspiration and, and raising the bar. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's great that the game's greatest ever player is also, it has to be said for me, the game's most watchable player. Such a fast fluent player Ronnie O'Sullivan I think we're going to have a look at some of the shots from that second frame Ronnie O'Sullivan beginning to take control this was the attempted long red that cost Mohamed Ibrahim this second frame Ronnie O'Sullivan making no mistake pleasure to watch isn't it Dave oh yeah absolutely M maybe not if you sat there <laughs> so much uh, he'd be appreciating it of course Mohamed Ibrahim all these little shots and little moves that he knows to open the, the frame up. Seems like he's trying to go in off the last the, the last black, but anyway, he didn't, and it's a one three seven, and that is the high break. He literally wanted to pot every ball, including the cue ball. Anyway, both players on a break, so well, I think it's not no great surprise to Mohamed Ibrahim that this has happened. It's just a question of if, if he gets another chance. He had one in the first round, in fact, had a couple. Can he just put something together, get involved? make some sort of contribution. He knows he's the big underdog, of course, but he doesn't want to come here and not show up at all. No, and there are signs that Mohamed Ibrahim is taking a few shots on. He's trying to give himself the opportunity, and I think that's the right thing to do. And he looks as though he is trying to enjoy the experience of playing Ronnie. I caught a glimpse of him uh, exhibiting a rather enigmatic smile towards the end of that uh, Sullivan 137 break, just in appreciation, basically, of the enormous talents that Ronnie O'Sullivan has and it's probably going to be a match that he'll never forget playing Ronnie O'Sullivan the greatest ever player for your first ever time you do normally remember that type of occasion in any sport yeah I'm sure he would have dreamed of this you know back in Egypt and playing in the amateur game it all seems a long way away all of this doesn't it but here he is it's a reality so is the scoreline by the way which is 2-0 just while we've got a moment, the match is uh, tomorrow we'll be watching. Table 1 at uh, 10 in the morning, Liam Highfield against Marco Fu. We've got uh, Ding Jun Wee against Yusa at 12. 2 o'clock, Chris Wakelin against Rian Evans. 4 o'clock, Sean Murphy against Oliver Brown. And at 6 o'clock, Mark Selby against Robbie McGuigan. McGuigan's come in to replace Fraser Patrick, who has withdrawn. So they're the matches on Table 1. hope you can join us tomorrow, but uh, of course we've still got this match to bring you this evening and uh, a big third frame I guess for Ibrahim he's going to try and <laughs> to keep that his opponent Ronnie O'Sullivan I'm just away from that table if he can still looking at his tip Ronnie O'Sullivan isn't, isn't he now what's he doing here goodness knows well it all seemed well in that last frame the 137 as we Get frame three underway. Mohamed Ibrahim, two nil down. Yeah, what?
what Ron is looking at here, he feels that when he's playing certain shots, he can just see a little bit of an edge of his tip sticking out from the ferrule, which is possibly off-putting to him. And by putting the cue on the rest like that, he's able to look down the cue from further away just to see if there is a problem. those sort of errors at the moment catching the knuckle of the middle pocket frame just over seven minutes and he's already in early in frame three and let's be honest he could have skipped this event if he wanted to but Four. the fact that he's here tells you that he's looking as I say to see where his game is and, and just play he, he does genuinely enjoy playing snooker and five. in that uh, season where he reached the five ranking finals years back now because that was all behind closed doors with no sort no one sort of bothering him otherwise other than the actual tournament which seemed to suit him actually Sullivan, 11. Maybe a chance here. A red that's to the right of the black will cut into the left corner. Oh, great pot. Now, one. Maybe favoured with a good cannon to the brown. No. Come at Ibrahim. One. I just think Mohamed Ibrahim is just finding conditions just a little lively out there. It's another mistake. Ron has missed the red and he's left it on. It's a thin cut though, but most players would take this on. That was a fluke from Ronnie O'Sullivan, the red to left corner, offered his hand in apology to his opponent. Yes, you couldn't see that happening. It wasn't something you could walk down the table and have a look at and see the chance of that red going in. He landed nicely on the yellow and now he's back in business again here in frame three. Three. Yes, it is looking ominous, you've got to say. <laughs> Certainly he's getting flukes as well. I mean, it's, it's Ibrahim who needs the luck, really, in this match. Eleven. 
12. Eighteen. Nineteen. Could go into that group of five reds here if he wishes Ronnie, but he doesn't like to play shots like this unless he's got full control of the cue ball and hampered by the red. Decided against that cannon. Twenty-six. He's okay here. Straightish red to the green pocket. But now could play a cannon into the five reds because he'll expect to be on the red to the left centre. Surprised he played it at that much pace. And he is on the red to the left centre, but he's also on a choice of others. Beautifully Thirty played two. once again. He ended up on four reds there. <laughs> Couldn't have got any better, could it? Thirty so three. three nil, he's dawning. Uh, lovely split. Take your pick. So it is very one-sided. It's got to be said, okay, the, the fluke helped 40. at the start, but the rest of it, I mean, the, the yellow actually 41. next shot, you know, was missable, but cued it so well. And uh, not much more to do now in this frame to get to within one of victory. 48. So will it be back to back century breaks? Fifty six. Fifty seven. Sixty-two. Sixty-three. He's in one of those moods, Ronnie O'Sullivan, isn't, isn't he? Barely giving the referee, Desislava Botsilov, the chance to respot the blue before playing his next red. Yeah, he didn't like that one, did he? But anyway, a solid 70 from O'Sullivan, and he, in no time at all, is on the brink of victory here. 3-0, and looking good to reach round two of this WST Classic. Well, not much has happened on the other tables while, while that's been going on, but uh, it's now 2-1 to Hamad Mir against Sam Craigie. So Craigie's pulled the third frame back. Jamie Jones and Rory McLeod just getting going, and... Uh, Lucas Klecker's 2-1 up and on Jimmy Robertson and, and in front of the next one as well. But uh, the focus of attention is, you, th there's no paying spectators. If you are just joining us, we've been saying this last two days, the people you can see there are players, guests, and it's interesting, quite a few have come in, not related to these two, to watch this match, just to watch Ronnie, I think. Jason Francis, his good friend, is in the audience there, but uh, all sorts of other people have come in to, uh, to just enjoy this match. There is spectator entry on the last day next Wednesday where they're going to play three rounds quarterfinals semi-finals and finals it's going to be a very busy day and uh, quite a tiring one for whoever makes it all the way to the end but it's, uh, they'll be going Ronnie away O'Sullivan with break. of course 80,000 pounds Ronnie O'Sullivan then three and up looking now to kill this off Actually, Anton Kazakov is sat there in the back row because he's just been beaten by Jackson Page, but he's uh, come come to watch this. Handy little nudge from the cubal to the brown. It's giving Ronnie something to think about here. Fifty two. 
shot at. Mohamed Ibrahim saved his shot. Was a good run. I think that's even better. Don't think he can see enough of the red near the left corner to pot it. Or can he? Well, he could, and he missed it by the merest fraction. Now, what damage has he done? First glance, I don't see anything easy. Well, he pushed the boat out there and didn't get it. So now this could be the last chance Mohamed Ibrahim gets. Can he do something with it? It was uh, obviously the double kiss there sent the cue ball back towards Reds. Can Ibrahim, who's uh, had to sort of sit out the last couple, can he put some together? It'd be nice right. to see him do it. You know, he's uh, from part of the world, maybe not associated with snooker, but like I say, it's played all around the globe now. did win the African Championship in 2018. He didn't take his tour, tour card up on that occasion. Six. But uh, he's here this season. Seven. Worth saying, he, as I say, beat Jimmy Robertson in that Welsh Open first round. I mean, Jimmy is a terrific player, very experienced, ranking event winner, had a great season last season. So that was a... Really good win, 4-3. Oh, that pink uh, thought twice. <laughs> 13. that shot nicely the red he'd love to get out of the way is the one nearest this left corner because it's blocking the black although saying that the black spot's occupied at the moment so it wouldn't benefit him greatly anyway all he needs is to slow down just finished a little awkward but he's okay 17 Twenty-four. It'd be easy to play for the red, just near the pink spot. I don't blame him for doing so, but... This break's not an easy 29. one to, to make. The black doesn't pot anywhere yet. The pink's a little awkward. Could play for that next, though. 30. Overscrewed it, though, badly. 30. Bit of a thin cut now. But no guarantee of good position on his next red from here. May have to consider cannoning into the three reds by the black spots and not one of those into play. Pot on the pink. 
And the red that's closest Sorry, to the cube will pot. But does anything pot into this left corner, I wonder? Well, how about that for a shot? What a great red it was, but very fortuitous to land on the black the way he did, but deserves a bit of luck. Absolutely. Listen, take it, because, you know, I think anyone needs help against Ronnie O'Sullivan, and also, you know, things have gone against him. O'Sullivan's had a couple of flukes himself. It'd be great to see him make a frame-winning break. Be, would be special for him to do it. It would be there Five, for the ages, wouldn't it, on tape? Or whatever the modern equivalent of tape is. Well, the positional shot from the black to the red was a poor one. Well, how over him? 44. I'm not surprised to see him miss this. This was a very awkward cutback. He certainly covered it by the three reds near the black spots. I don't know if Ronnie can plant a red onto it. He could and did. One. Well, is the stage set for the end of the match? This was the Seven. little plant here. Nicely played, actually. Nicely controlled. Eight. It would be just like Ronnie, wouldn't it, to win this tournament, get in the Tour Championship, win that as well. <laughs> I don't think anyone would be surprised if that happened. But I think the main thing is he's back playing, he's back enjoying playing Third. as we head towards the World Championship in a month's time. And it looks like we'll see more of him in this year's WST Classic. Yeah, still a long way behind in this frame, Ronnie, but the ball's at his mercy. Playing the most difficult red. Thirty seven. Thirty eight. Mohammed Ibrahim's last hope. Another chance in this fourth frame. Everything now set out in the open for Ronnie O'Sullivan to clinch frame and match here. 45. 45. But no, a reprieve. Very unexpected one now. What Ronnie a chance O'Sullivan this is 45. for Mohamed Ibrahim. Comes to the table just a single point behind. What a chance to win a frame. Still looking at that tip. Now, this did sound very tinny, it has to be said. It wasn't the best strike by any means, but oh, Ronnie was laughing in his own error there. Well, as you say, very unexpected. A lifeline thrown in the direction of Mohamed Ibrahim. Can he grab hold of it here? Starts with this uh, pot with the rest and the extension on the cue. So it's a good chance, but <laughs> there's pressure One. on as well because you know it's, it's a big moment really. He knows he should win the frame, but doing it is another matter. But he's got the chance. The key thing here is just not to make the keyboard travel unnecessarily far. Six. It just needs to roll balls in 
by simple stuns and screws. Already he's played for the black and straight Seven. away this keyboard's going to have to travel a few feet to get close to the yellow, so already a bit of a problem. Sixteen. For me, he should never have played for the black from that last red. Should have gone up the table for the blue. If he'd have overrun it, it'd have been guaranteed to be on brown or yellow. He didn't get nicely on the yellow. As so often happens, once you begin to lose position, it begins to snowball. And this green is a tricky cutback now. Nineteen. Well, he just needs the brown for his first frame of the match. A frame one against Ronnie O'Sullivan, who seemed to have the match won. In it goes. Well done, Thank Mohamed Ibrahim. Great wasn't expecting to get the chance it was up to him to take it he has done and he extends the match 28 So Mohamed Ibrahim Mohamed of Ibrahim Egypt has averted the whitewash. It was, as I say, an unexpected opening, really. O'Sullivan missing the penultimate red using the rest. And Ibrahim did the rest. He won the frame to trial 3-1. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people watching in Egypt delighted to see that. Just to say Sam Craig, he's pulled back now to 2-2 with Hamad Mir. It was 2-0 to Mir. Jamie Jones 1-0 up against Rory McLeod. And Lu Lucas Kleckers 3-1 up against... Jimmy Robertson. There are still matches actually to go on. Well, in fact, there's one match, isn't there, to go on? David Grace and Ryan Thomason. And the winner of that plays O'Sullivan or Ibrahim. And then we will have our second day completed. As I say, tomorrow we've got uh, some, some real big hitters. We've got uh, the likes of Marco Fu, Ali Carter, Ding Junhui, John Higgins, Sean Murphy, Mark Selby. So some real big names out in the middle. Rian Evans as well taking on Chris Wakelin, the shootout champion. So do join us uh, from 10 o'clock local time because we're not done here yet because that man didn't put it away. Well, this was the mistake from Ronnie with the rest that proved to be his last shot of the previous frame. But he keeps looking at this tip. There's, there's an issue with it. Some, there's something that's distracting him. He's looking down the Break. end of his cue. <coughs> Must be a little bit of an edge of the tip sticking out, but... Mohamed Ibrahim there, pot in pink to win his first ever frame against Ronnie O'Sullivan. He breaks off for frame number five, hoping to extend this match still further. Well, it's really on his mind now, this uh, business with the tip. He's still obsessing over it. At least it stayed on. <laughs> Came off, didn't it, a few times at the Welsh Open. suggest Dave that this was something that may have happened in Thailand during the World Six Reds and he's barely looked at the queue since returning to England from Thailand and he's just noticed the problem now.
Well, that uh, was a bit of a howler, let's be honest. Let's see if O'Sullivan, though, could pot this initial red. It's not a gimme, really. He's not in. So, having played so well to 3-0 and very nearly to 4-0, he's just not quite going his way now. And he's getting that tip and thinking about the queue. And by now, he should really have been doing his media interviews. One. It's an eclectic group of people who've won frames against Ronnie O'Sullivan. Fred Davis, when he was right at the end of his career, in his, in his late 70s, when he was 77, he played Ronnie in his first season when he was 16 and he won a frame off him. Slava Vashilova measuring the blue spot with the marker. Clearly decided it didn't Six. go on, so next to highest the black spot. Whatever have six. Good pot from Mohamed Ibrahim. Seems to be growing into this match. He's enjoying this more and more. He's getting opportunities. I don't think he was expecting to be getting. clearance he made was good though, I thought you know, he was under pressure, he might have looked straight forward but these conditions, very different to what he's used to and he's you know, playing O'Sullivan, not, uh, not as easy as it looks to make sure he doesn't leave this red near the right corner for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Oh, I can't believe that was the right shot to play. He could have played thin off that red, left the cue ball somewhere near the jaws of the green pocket. That would have done nicely, but well, Ronnie O'Sullivan play a similar shot here. He was lucky not to leave a red on there. Surely Ronnie will just glance off this red, leave the cue ball somewhere near the green pocket. This is exactly what Mohamed Ibrahim should have played on his last visit. So he is faced with a bit of a problem now.
Messi played for Romeo Sullivan. Not easy this time for Mohamed Ibrahim to get the cue ball safe. Is he taking the red on? No. Good effort. Just caught the wrong red first there. He offers his hand in apology to Ronnie. Great outcome. Yeah, I mean, suddenly it's become a match again. It was procession, really, wasn't it? And it looked like it would be 4 0 and over very quickly, but now it's become a bit of a battle. But O'Sullivan is uh, he's up for the battle at least. too thick on the red the one in picture you can see is hidden by the yellow but the red near the rest of the corner will certainly pot oh, it was one. so straight couldn't avoid the jaws with the cue ball but the red went in I'd be surprised if Ronnie risks the pink it's a very very difficult pot One. Problem is, it didn't, so an opportunity again for Mohamed Ibrahim. Yeah, that one didn't threaten, it's got to be said. Been a worse outcome, I guess. One superb queuing from Ronnie, hampered by the brown, but potted the red anyway. Now, is he just about okay on the yellow to attempt it to the center pocket? I wonder the brown and a cannon so the green has definitely helped Ronnie he's on this red to the left corner just needs one Five. good positional shot for a colour perhaps the pink to left centre six Six. Yeah, it seems a bit of focus has gone. He was kind of in the zone for a good sort of 20 minutes, wasn't he? But just all got a bit bogged down now. Ronnie O'Sullivan will be delighted that Mohamed Ibrahim has brought the black into play because this was becoming one of those frames that Ronnie O'Sullivan I don't think Francis being engaged in.
just for a minute. That looked like it might be an almighty fluke, actually, but uh, just needed a sort of better kiss on the last red. But suddenly he's in this match, isn't he? You know, this has got a bit scrappy and getting plenty of table time. He got away with that really, that red could have could have been over the pocket on another day. But all got a bit sort of dragged out. Just wonder if he can stun him behind the yellow. He could indeed. I wonder if he tried to bring the pink into play as well there. That could have been helpful, but nevertheless it's a snooker and it's a helpful one. This won't reach. Oh, another inch of running. Oh, four. And it would have been a fairly maple red on. fifth frame becoming very bogged down but as we said the position of the balls is very good one mistake could be extremely costly so this safety exchange between the two players of paramount importance that's not the best shot from Ronnie but it could be advantageous if Ibrahim decides to take a pot on here and misses it It's only the yellow now hanging on to its own spot, and that tells you what sort of frame it's been low score and scrappy. It actually would be a good chance, actually, if someone gets in. The reds are all in play. And the uh, colours are still there, but it's just uh, hard work getting any sort of opening. Yes, well, he really does need to apply himself here and not lose focus because he only needs one good chance on here. They're all there, as you say, Dave. brought the pink into place, all of a sudden blue, pink and black are all in the open. Well, that hasn't worked out too badly, but the red that's just above the black will certainly pot to this white corner if there's no safety alternative. So, the deadlock is broken by Mohamed Ibrahim. Now, what can he put together here? Certainly, there's no holding back with the reds. Obviously, he wasn't exactly sure where the Cuba would finish, but it's finished well. I mean, when O'Sullivan was about to play that red with the rest in frame four, not far from the winning line, you could have named your own old Seven. Song. Mohamed Ibrahim winning this match, but <laughs> you just never know if he could put this frame away, then suddenly he's got a lot closer. Eight. 
Great. We certainly couldn't hope for a better opportunity than this. The cue ball doesn't need to travel any great distance at all. Each time he plays from red to colour. Played for the black, but he can't see it, so we'll have to play the blue. He's had a look to see if the red that's closest to his hand will drop into that left centre. Twenty nine. Thirty. Just seems that he's no longer sort of thinking about who he's playing, he's just playing the match now. He's looking more confident. So, very interesting turn of events this. It was a scrappy start to the frame. Got in with the good long red, it needs this red, and it should be 3 2 to O'Sullivan, when it could easily have been 4 0. He's taken them nicely, 38. and it looks like we're heading into frame six of a possible seven. You can see the difference in Mohamed Ibrahim's play. Much quicker around the table 45. now. Feeling more and more confident. This match grows ever longer. He's been given opportunities. It's definitely sparked a bit of revival in his play. Well, he missed frame. that one, but he's over the line in the frame. 54 in front, 35 on. Mohamed Ibrahim extends the match and raises the prospect of a full-scale recovery. O'Sullivan just seemed to lose some focus there, and he needs to get it back because there's still a match to be won. It was 3-0. It could so easily have been 4-0. Missed that penultimate red with the rest in the last frame. Didn't make much impact in that frame, and it's 3-2. Hamad Mir going 3-2 up on uh, Sam Craigie Jamie Jones 2-0 over Roy McLeod and Jimmy Robertson trails 3-2 uh, to Lucas Kleckers that might be going the distance and David Grace and uh, Ryan Thomas are still waiting very patiently they were due to go on at 6 there's no table free at the moment so they're just sort of uh, keeping watch I guess and waiting for one of these matches to finish and I'm sure they thought well they may even be on this table because this looks over but it isn't it's 3-2 
time, six. Ronnie O'Sullivan, break. Is this we're going to finish. Oh, it's just travelled far enough to not be potable from where the cue ball is, but of course, normally you wouldn't expect O'Sullivan to miss this. One. So, first chance in frame six has fallen to Ronnie. At some point, if he can just get onto the red that's above the black to the left corner can stun into the red that's to the right of the black, knock that out of the way and really open things up so immediately he's trying to leave himself that angle oh do you know what I think he's played it perfectly Three. may not be quite straight enough on that red actually Well, if he could put this away in one visit, that would at least end the evening on a high. Of course, he made that wonderful 137 back in the second frame, 70 in the third. Well, a nice split, so a good chance here for O'Sullivan to get this one. I think Ronnie's focus and concentration may come and it may go, but I think his form is pretty much a constant. And of course, the moment he's threatened, there was a slight leap. He's managed to find top gear again. You think overall he's had a good attitude to this match? He's come here businesslike, he's had his match head on, and 
Didn't get too down on himself when things turned a bit scrappy. He's just uh, looked for this chance. And it's a great one now, isn't it? Everything is there. Not much more to do to win the match. Next red is match ball. Uh, it's been a quick kill in this frame, even though you could argue maybe he should have won 4-0. The fact is, Ronnie O'Sullivan is into the next round. Well, Mohamed Ibrahim put a bit of pressure on and he will look back, I think, with uh, some positivity on this match. He won two frames. He's had the experience of playing Ronnie O'Sullivan. He wasn't hammered by him. Far from it. But in the end, the quality of O'Sullivan has shone through. Well, he's had his chances, Mohamed Ibrahim, and the scoreline... Certainly a respectable one. So we can certainly take something out of this match. Yes, the fact he's played Ronnie O'Sullivan is proof that he is a snooker professional. He's here mixing it with the top players, trying to find his way in the sport. And I'm sure learning as he goes. Can O'Sullivan end with a second century? Well, he's still not happy with the cue, despite this uh, good break to win it. to be looked at before the next match. But despite that, he's potted the red and he's surely going to make the century now. Second of the match. To win the match. Completely lost the cue ball, but at least he's made the century. But that's what's annoyed him. He, he's not happy to make the century. He's annoyed at the positional shot. So <laughs> a bit of a strange ending, but he's won by four frames to two. Ronnie O'Sullivan into the last 64 of the WST Classic. He's concerned about his cue. He's got a bit of time to have that looked at before the next match. He's just a bit perturbed by it. But uh, at times he played very well. He had the 137 total clearance in frame two. He had the 104 in frame six. He's beaten Mohamed Ibrahim by four frames to two. Get the feeling he might be a while yet on that table. There may be some bonus action here with David Grace and Ryan Thomason. But for Dominic and myself, that's it for today. But we'll be back with you at 10 o'clock in the morning. And it's uh, Liam Highfield against Marco Fu, which will be the main match. So do join us for that but for now from Leicester it's good night